Hi class, in this video here I want to walk you through section 2.8 and this is talking about something called implicit differentiation which then leads into something called related rates. And uh, what I'm going to do in this um, lecture here is I'm going to try to introduce the topic of implicit differentiation to you, show you a few examples and then uh, have that drive into what exactly related rates are. Okay, so first off, what, what exactly is um, implicit differentiation? Okay, so like, let me show you. Uh, let's find the following. If I ask you to differentiate with respect to x, x squared, okay, you know, what do you get? Well, this is obviously just 2x, okay? Or what if I ask you to differentiate with respect to x, something like, I don't know, this, um, the square root of x cubed, right? So, or x cubed plus 1, excuse me square root of x cubed plus one. So you, what you do is you, you know, you're going to rewrite this, right? You're going to write this as x cubed plus one to the one half. And then what you can do is you're going to take the derivative of the outside. So you bring the one half down, leave the inside alone. The, this becomes minus one half. And then you take the derivative of the inside, which becomes three x squared, right? This is just the chain rule. All right, but now, now notice if I ask you about this. What if I say find the derivative with respect to x of y squared? Okay, notice how like over here the, the dx here and x, now it's different, right? So what you would do here is you would chain rule this. So you take the 2, you bring it down. You'd leave, you treat this y as the inside, so you'd leave that alone. Then the two becomes two minus one. And then what's the derivative of the inside? Well, what's the derivative of y with respect to x? That's just dy dx. Okay, so this becomes two y times dy dx. And the reason we do that is because look, I'm asking you to find the derivative with respect to x. What we're saying here is, well, there's a y there. Well, we're gonna assume that y is some function of x, okay? And if it's not, then, then dy dx is just zero and it goes away anyways. Um, so we just treat it that way. So all you're gonna have to do to do implicit differentiation, okay, this is important. Whenever I say find the derivative with respect to say x and it's a different variable like y, you're gonna take the derivative as you normally would and then tack on a dy dx. Okay, and then hopefully you'll see um, uh, with the final example when we get to related rates why this is important. Okay, so this is going to be the first example we're going to do. All right. So, so you have this function here, or this expression here. For y cubed plus x squared times y to the fifth minus x to the fourth is equal to 27. What I want to do here is I want to find what dy dx is. Okay, so now, now here's the thing. When you have something listed like this, okay y is equal to x squared this is an explicit relationship okay what that means is you can solve um solve for y get y by itself and y is equal to some expression this right here this is an implicit relationship between x and y So there is some relationship that exists between x and y. This is the relationship here, but like there's no way to just take this expression and just solve it for y. Okay, but we can still find what dy dx is. Okay, so I wanna do that. And then what I wanna do is I wanna find the slope of the tangent line to the curve at the point zero comma three. All right, so here's how you're going to, um, uh, to do this, these problems. All right, you're gonna differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x or whatever variable you are differentiating with respect to. So I'll do some other problems so that you'll see. Okay, apply with different variables. Apply the rules of differentiation. Okay, the power, product, quotient, chain rule as necessary. Okay, anytime an expression involving y is differentiated, dy dx will be a, dy dx will be a factor in the result. So you will see this, okay? What you're gonna do is you're gonna isolate then all terms with dy dx as a factor on one side of the equation you're gonna factor out dy dx, and then you're gonna divide both sides of the equation to isolate this dy dx. Okay. So this one's a little bit tricky here. All right, so first one here. So for this expression, all right, 
uh, y cubed plus x squared times y to the fifth minus x to the fourth is equal to 27. All right, let's first find what dy dx is. Okay, so let me rewrite it. So we have y cubed plus x squared y to the fifth minus x to the fourth is equal to 27. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. Okay. All right, so let's just go through this. First thing I'm going to have to do here, I'm going to have to find the derivative of y cubed with respect to x. So just treat it bring, like, like you normally would. Bring down the 3 y squared, and then now when you're differentiating y with respect to x, you get times dy dx. All right, here, now when I go to this, this here, I'm going to have to use the product rule. So take the derivative of the first term, which is just an x. Okay, so it's x squared, so this becomes 2x times y to the fifth, plus, now I'm going to leave the x squared alone, take the derivative of y to the fifth. So the 5 comes down, this becomes y to the fourth, but now I differentiated a y times dy dx. Minus differentiation of x to the fourth power, so minus 4x cubed is equal to, well, the derivative of a constant is just 0. All right, so watch this. Let me, let me rearrange this stuff. Okay, so this is 3y squared dy dx plus, I'm going to put the other dy dx here, 5x squared y to the fourth dy dx plus 2xy to the fifth minus 4x cubed is equal to 0. Okay, so what you're going to do next is you're going to leave these two terms here on this side, and you're going to subtract these over. Right? Notice how each of these terms have a dy dx in it, though. So let me factor that out. dy dx times 3y squared plus 5x squared y to the fourth is equal to. So I added the 4x cubed over, and I subtracted this over. So now your final step here, just divide this over. So you're going to divide everything literally by 3y squared plus 5x squared y to the fourth. I'm going to divide that on both sides. And look, these are going to cancel. And you're just left with dy dx is equal to 4x cubed minus 2xy to the fifth all over 3y squared plus 5x squared y to the fourth. And I know that seems crazy, but that is the answer. And, and as you do these problems, especially on your homework, you're going to get answers like this where, where, where it looks a little, little crazy. All right, so then the next question says, find the slope of the tangent line to the curve at this point, 0, 3. So find slope of tangent line at 0, 3. Well, look, here was our dy dx. This is our slope of the tangent line. Okay, It's 4x cubed minus 2xy to the fifth, which is just from the previous slide, divided by 3y squared plus 5x squared y to the fourth. All you're going to do is you're going to plug this into dy dx. Literally, that's all you're going to do. So you're going to get 4 times 0 cubed minus 2 times 0 times 3 to the fifth power all over 3 times 3 cubed squared plus 5 uh, times 0 squared. And then, th again, 3 goes in for y. Well, everything with the 0 goes away, so that's just 0. This goes away, right, because there's a 0 in it. So 3 squared is 9 times 3, 27. And it looks like the slope of the tangent line at this point, 0, 3 is 0. So there's a horizontal tangent line. 
All right, so just, just the big thing. The big thing here to remember is whenever you go to differentiate something with a y, you're just tacking on a dy dx here. All right, let's 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 do another example where um, where we mix up the variables here, just so you can just you see it a little differently. OK, so if we have this demand function, OK, x is equal to, so x is going to be the quantity demanded here. It's the square root of 200 minus p cubed. And what I want to find is I want to find dp dx here. So I'm just going to rewrite this as 200 minus p cubed to the 1 half power. All right, so find dp dx, OK? So um, to do this, what you're going to do is you're going to differentiate both sides with respect to x, OK? Whatever this, this bottom part is here, OK? So watch what will happen when you do that. All right, well, what's the derivative of uh, x here? It's just 1. You're going to need to chain rule this. OK, derivative of the outside. So the 1 half comes down times the inside. 1 half, then you take the derivative of that 1 half minus 1 gets me minus 1 half times, OK, important now. All right, take the derivative of the inside. So now I'm going to derivative of 200 is 0. Ah, now I'm differentiating p with respect to x. So, so don't forget you have this negative here. So it's minus, you bring the 3 down, p squared. And then when you go to take the derivative of p, because it's not x, you get times dp dx. So if it had been a y, it would have been dy dx. So at this point, you just need to just clean this up. So this is 1 is equal to, so this is minus 3p squared divided by 2 square root of 200 minus p cubed. I'm just bringing down the negative exponent and rewriting it times dp dx. So just cross multiply here, right? This is 1 over 1. So this is equal to, so this, what's in the denominator is going to come up to the numerator. So it's, it's equal to 2 times the square root of 200, oh, 200 minus p cubed all over. And then don't forget the, the negative here. So minus 3p squared is equal to dp dx. So with all these problems, with all these problems, it's it's really just about remembering when you get to differentiate a variable that's not x, add in that dy dx, or, or in this case, dp dx. That's it. Just that's what I'm trying to hit home with you. All right, one last problem here. And so this goes into related rates. Um, and these word problems are a little bit tricky. OK, and, and what it involves is understanding what you're given and what formula they're asking for. All right. So a restaurant supplier services the restaurants in a circular area. Circular area. Okay. So what is the area of a circle? That's the first thing you're going to be given. So we know that area is equal to pi times the radius squared, right? in such a way that the radius r is increasing. So that, that's telling you the rate of change. So the radius is increasing at a rate of um, uh, uh, 2 miles per year. OK, so the, the rate of change of the radius is 2 miles per year. OK. Okay, so this per year tells me that this problem is going to involve time. Okay, at a moment when r is equal to 5 miles. So you're also given that the radius is equal to 5 miles. At that exact moment, how fast is the area increasing? So what it's asking us to find, what it's asking us to find 
Okay, how fast is the area increasing? Find rate of change of area. All right, so this is a little bit tricky. We're going to need to use this formula here, okay? So it's asking you the rate of change at a moment in time. Okay, so what they're asking you to find then is d area, the rate of change of the area with respect to time, dA dt. All right, so how would we find that? So you're gonna take your equation and differentiate both sides with respect to t. Now watch what happens when you do. Well, treat this so the derivative of, you know, just like x. If this was x, it would be 1. But now it's with respect to t. Notice how the t and the a are different. So this is just dA dt. <gasps> Look, that's what we're trying to find is equal to pi is a constant r is a variable right so bring the 2 down r 2 minus 1 is 1 times but now you're respecting with r or uh, differentiating with respect to t this is dr dt well look at this okay i'm telling you when r is 5 miles and am I giving you the rate of change of the radius dr dt? Absolutely. Look, I'm telling you it's 2 miles per year. So this is 2 pi. r is 5 miles. dr dt is 2 miles per year. So look, 2 pi times 5 is 10 pi times 2 gets me 20 pi miles times miles times miles squared. Per year. All right, class. I know this is a little bit um, uh, tricky, um, but you know, the the more you practice in your homework, and if you have any questions, I am I'm always here uh, to help.